problem of this burrito crisis? When you eat a burrito, it can be a very messy thing to eat. Sometimes, unless you pan fry it, but what if you're eating like a cold burrito? So, and using plates, it's pretty boring. I don't blame you guys for um, just putting it in and keeping it left out in the cold. Um, but we have a solution for you, and this is one of a kind innovation for all food tech related uh, products. I would like to introduce to you the burrito bubble. This fun, fancy, and convenient design would help you not only enjoy your burrito, but make it more efficient as well. Here's, here's how it works. You first, you insert the burrito. I'm using this as an example. This is not a burrito, but this is a wrap. Um, you insert the wrap to the burrito butter. You lift as you're eating it. And you enjoy. Cheers. here in Utah. And within our target group, um, there we have over 700, uh, 700,000 people existing and would love to experience a one-of-a-kind lifetime <laughs> experience for enjoying a simple burrito. Now, what is our market size? Um, we have a $17 billion within the global burrito market. And within the USA, uh, there is over $8 billion. And as very humble as we are, and assuming we're using 1% of the market share, there is $88 billion for us to grow with. And I would like to pass it to Connor for uh, a little bit more about our product. So, we do have an even viable product, but it does have its flaws. We have some improvements coming. As some people in the audience have stated, they don't really want to eat 25% of the burrito at a time. And so we've taken to the next steps and we're adding more nachos. This is truly innovative. And so you'll be able to eat it at your own pace because we're really pushing it. You, know, you want to be able to just set it down so you're done with your burrito. And it just, because you can set it down, it allows you to really get the full experience of your burrito. And it's dishwasher safe. We looked it up, PETG is a plastic that should be able to be heated up to around 80 degrees Celsius. For Freedom Unit users, that's like 160 degrees and should be safe in your dishwasher. It is also doesn't leach anything, and so you should be able to keep it food safe. And we also, I already explained it. So our business model, how are we making money? It doesn't make a lot of sense because it was a piece of plastic. But with our target group of like 20 to 34, which are the people who typically like to adopt products and eat food lazily, it's about 700,000 people. And it doesn't seem like a lot, but that's just Utah alone. So it's like, we can, we're looking to adopt it. It's like once we get what, what we're looking for, we can expand to further markets to give us more people to buy our product. And at $25 per unit, just in Utah, at by 2030, we would make $18 million. And for a group of three, that's retirement. So it's like, what's our go to market? How do you plan on like really pushing home that our product is one you want to use? And so it's like, we're going to expand our options. So then we're going to say, it's like, all right, maybe you want sandwiches. Maybe you're not a burrito guy. So you're going to buy the sandwich servant. You know, really like pushing the next gen of food. 
and it's like really locked in technology to just kind of help you validate your products. So you know, when you need to contact us, we know exactly which one you bought, and we can just get those parts shipped to you as fast as possible. And then we're also going to be using an app, which will help you generate those burrito ideas, or sandwiches, depending on if you which one you're buying. And then we'll also have popular restaurants and also allow restaurants in the area to advertise, which will also bring us more money. So who's our competition? It's a piece of plastic, right? Well, Reynolds Wrap, which is just aluminum. People will wrap it in a Reynolds Wrap. It's cheap. It's inexpensive, but it's also one-time use. At least it should be. If you use it twice, that's at your own risk. And you have this piece of cardboard. It's just designed for you to peel away. It's kind of like the birthplace of this. You're like, okay, but what if we wanted to make that reusable? And so that's where Rio Buddy was designed. Other options are kind of like Chipotle. It's just like you're buying the burrito, they kind of pre-wrap it for you. And it's like, that's just one time use and expensive. And like other competitions can be found on Amazon. I don't know their names because they were kind of strange. It's just like this one just kind of folds in half. This one's like just a huge water bottle. And they're all both around $40. Now, we're aiming to be $25 because that seems more realistic for this type of product. And so next will be Leo who's going to explain the team and then our competitive markets and just kind of like our end ask of what we're looking for. Thank you, Connor. So, um, our advantages over our current and future competitors basically is that, well, for foremost, and arguably the our biggest advantage is that we'll be the first free lifter on the market. Um, you might have seen before there might have been, or there was kind of like other things you could buy to put burritos in, but they don't really lift the burrito in the same way, and in some way, if you have to take it out, it kind of just makes a mess of this. So, we're basically the only ones, we're the, like, we're the first ones on the market. Second is that uh, we designed it so that it would be catchy, you know, you're going out and wherever there's a burrito on the menu, or if you're making one at home, you're going to want your burrito butler, your companion with you. And finally, um, it's easy to use, you know, um, we designed it so that it simplifies how you eat burritos. You don't have to worry about any messes. You don't have to worry about um, how you're gonna you know, bring your burrito from point A to point B, and overall, that'll just make it more simple for anyone who buys it. And we uh, already met them, but we have an excellent team um, full of just engineers and people that have uh, experience. For example, Connor is our is the founder of Rita Butler and also the CEO. He's basically the center of passion and vision towards the future of um, Rita Butler. We have Tian, who is the founder of Fufu, which is the free food from you for you, which is an app for University of Utah students to find where free food is located. He has uh, experience in branding and social media, so that'll definitely help us to kickstart um, the beginning of our journey. And then there's me as our CTO. Um, I have experience in programming and operating systems, but most importantly, I'll use that experience to develop the, the app that we plan to use and the blockchain technology that goes along with it, and also furthering the, the product development for future iterations of the group. So, um, believe it or not, we do have some, what we like to call burrito buddies, people that have tried it out. Uh, first and foremost, um, as you can see, we're already accomplishing, accomplishing what we want to accomplish. It's convenient, mess-free. It's, you know, I guess, astonishing. And if you want to go as far as revolutionizing the way that people eat burritos, this is exactly what we want to accomplish. But with the burrito button, is to basically just take what might seem like an ordinary experience of eating burrito, and both make it more. Uh, convenient, mess free, and all of the above, and just more fun in general. Finally, the financials. So, we're looking for an investment to basically uh, put inventory financing to kickstart our Rio Butler journey. Uh, more specifically, we're looking for $100,000 as part of the angel round so that we can kickstart the uh, initial stock of Rio Buddies to sell, or Rio Butlers to sell. Um, we project that by 2030 we'll have revenue of $18 million. So that in the, and that means that in the latter years, closer to 2030, we'll be seeing something closer to $1.8 million every year. So definitely exciting opportunity, and we hope that 
you decide to invest with us and help us create this Brito, this revolution, or this Brito Butler journey. And, yeah. So, thank you so much for being here. I'm curious where you're planning on selling these and um, your strategy for advertising and like acquiring new customers. Realistically, like we're just planning on just doing it one, like hopefully it's like mouth to mouth, but like as with the young customer base, the idea is it's like someone's gonna see this back, what on earth is that? And they're gonna be like, okay, this is the Brita way. It, it helps you like in your game, you can just put this crap down. And they're like, oh my gosh, I need one, where do I get that? So we're gonna probably be selling just online markets. Amazon and just like maybe, maybe eBay, I don't know, maybe second hand use. Maybe not the best idea, but it works, right? It's also needs to space. <laughs> but like that's the like the goal is just got mostly online marketing. I don't really intend on like having to be on shelves at this point. If we expand to have you more recognizable brand, we might branch out to choose that. Um, I'm very clumsy. I feel like if I were to put this down, like I would end up In theory, like if you recognize like the water bottles that are, have the anti-knockdown technology, we could try to incorporate that, but it hasn't necessarily been included in the product yet. It's a fairly sturdy product as it is. Hopefully the weight of it should keep it in place. Unless you're planning on like smacking the thing across the room, but yeah. right. And we're also thinking of having like a lid for it just so that right you can feel the thing where you want. So. Um so I'm not like a Burrito connoisseur by any means, but uh, like I, I'll just throw it in the microwave for 30 seconds and then I'll take it as is, which I think should fit in your 80 Celsius, 150 something degree minimum. Uh, but I, I'm thinking of like the people that actually like cook their own um, burritos and don't just reheat chipotle ones. Uh, they probably have their ovens set to 300 plus degrees. Uh, when they take those ingredients out, uh, I don't know if that will fit in the tolerances. Do you plan on having like a pro model with like higher standard materials? I honestly, I, I feel like that would be an enchilada more than a burrito. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but if you're trying to shove a, like an oven baked enchilada into this, I feel like that's a user error at that point. We would not cover it under our special limits of warranty. But it's like, I, like we haven't really considered so much trying to shove something 300 degrees into it, I guess. We'll look into it, get back to <laughs> How separate are like the components of your design? So if someone breaks up the notch, do you have to buy a whole new one? Or? Yes, so right now it's just two components. So replacing the parts should be fairly simple. The inside is fairly robust, but it should be resistant to scraping and it should last a while. So if you do end up breaking it, it would just be a matter of replacing it at this point. There, the goal is to be cheap enough that people wouldn't be like instantly just trying to throw it away because it's not. Yeah, uh, good product. I have a question from Martin. Maybe you thought about this. Uh, are you considering having like different colors of the product? Because believe me, that will make a difference. So some advice I've been given by Rumorgar was that's actually a bad idea because if you have in stock a bunch of colors, let's say we decide pink, but no one wants it. Now we have a bunch of like goods that we can't sell and it's just a lost cause. And so we have to do the marketing to prove that people would actually want the color before we would expand to offer it. We might make it so that you could like, buy them a custom online in a custom color, but our offering is designed to be limited to really cut down the costs. One thing that you can do is having like a survey or questionnaire for your users. What kind of product you want to see for the readable group? Yeah. It's just a suggestion. No, no, that's a good idea. Thank you. Uh, two questions. One, if I can see the design right, if you turn it sideways, will the notch fall out? Other way. Okay, so it does lock it. Yeah, okay. yeah. So I think you guys could really play that up as well. Maybe with uh, some like athletic stuff, like people skateboarding, using the burrito butler to show how robust it is. Uh, and then my second thing is, unfortunately I actually know the PTG, PTG does leach, especially at high temperatures. Uh, and you said that it doesn't? I said it's food safe. 
Uh, okay, you actually said it didn't. You know, I wrote it down. Uh, but just, just so you know, it does leach and be careful with that. Yeah. Last one. I, I love what you're doing. I think it's a really fun combination for sure. Um, my one comment was in some of the photos of the burrito bottle that you had, like plastic bags or whatever that the burritos were in, um, I can see that if you do have a messy burrito, the inside of the burrito bubble is going to get really messy as well. Um, and I don't know how much that's going to, how easy that's going to be to wash off, even in the dishwasher. Um, and then the holes in the side, if it does get leaky and you raise it up to the mid position, I, would, I can see the juices from the burrito just kind of spilling out the side of the container. Yeah. And that is something we're running in designing. I've been thinking about having some like folding. Mm -hmm. Just kind of like rubber flaps that would kind of create a seal. This is just pretty quick at this point, so it's pretty rudimentary. But like the goal is to try to make it as like leak free as possible. But in its current state, it definitely is not. So if you have something very leaking, you bite into it, you definitely have to buy it. Yeah. 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 Yeah.